Well, let's settle home for stories making news. The governor of the Bank of Ghana's Edge Management of the National Bank and College to adjust its curricula to complement recent demands in the banking industry. Speaking at the 25th anniversary of the National uh, Bank and College, the governor stated it was high time the college supported the banking sector with the needed human resources to sustain activities. Charles Aite reports. The 25th anniversary of the National Banking College attracted captains of industry within the banking industry to deliberate on the future of the college. Governor of the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Ennis Anderson, called on management of the college to see recent bank reforms as a need to adjust aspects of the curricula to complement new trends in the banking sector. Looking to the future for the anniversary celebration, this is up and requires sober reflection given what has gone on in the banking sector over the past two years. As you are aware, the Bank of Ghana is mandated by law to promote the safety, soundness, and stability of the financial system, and most importantly, to protect the interest of depositors. President of the Ghana Association of Bankers, Al Hassan Andani, also charged the National Banking College to, as a matter of urgency, adopt new curricula that reflects the changing trends in the banking industry. Financial services has become, you know, very, very, you know, specific to client needs, and therefore the banking college has to transform itself into the training you know, to train the bankers of the future, which is very digital, which is very information driven, and which is very client centric. Meanwhile, principal of the National Banking College, Abina Kisua, explained to Joy Business new additions to the curricula that will orient banking participants on new banking reforms. We have already started. Um, our head of uh, ICT, Mr. Kwesi Debra, has already put in programs for cyber security. Remember that we, most of our uh, heads of faculty actually coordinate with industry experts. So um, they will teach some, but they will bring in industry experts to deliver or design programs to support the knowledge. Well, we'll have some more news from the banking sector later on in the bulletin, but I want to tackle this one. Imani Ghana has criticized the petroleum agreement signed with international oil company Aka Energy. At a media encounter on how Ghana may lose out on Africa's biggest oil find, Imani says Ghana has been short change by several billion dollars president of imani africa franklin kujo has been explaining if you recall it last happened in 2015 right yeah 2015 and it was ruled in 2017. it lost is the the arbitration the international you know ghana Court of War had this uh, uh problem maritime dispute over who actually owns some aspects of our oil. And I think it's lost rude that we own everything. In fact, we won the case hands down. Now for the Petroleum Commission to suggest that because ACAS find is inhibited or was inhibited by its loss, and so they are going to grant them, they believe that the minister should grant an extension of up to 2049, 13 more years, is actually worrying. I thought I should put this out. The second point also is that the economics of the analysis that the Petroleum Commission puts out suggests that ACAS find, as we speak, is about 297 million barrels of oil. Mm -hmm. Now, the understanding is that if we're looking at that accounting, what it means is that Ghana is going to get about 55% of the rent, economic rent from that. The argument being made is that we are making the argument from Imani that because we know, and ACAS actually um, confirmed that the recoverable, recoverable assets are up to almost a billion, what it means is that if we suggest, if we argue our point that the existing additional wells, the two wells that were found, and whose, um, uh, should I say, assets are close to about 500 million barrels of oil, should come under a new petroleum agreement, what it means is that the fiscals will work in our favor. So there's a lot that is wrong with this agreement, and I think that both the Petroleum Commission should not just be, and then the Ghana National Petroleum Co Co Corporation, Co Co Corporation, right, should not be giving opinions in the dark. If the minister is not going to listen to them by the end of today, 
they must also come out with what they are saying. All right, so that was President of Imani Africa, Franklin Kujo. Let's get some more uh, perspective to this story. Joining me uh, via Skype is uh, energy expert Ishmael Ejikumahini. You can see him there. Uh, thanks for your time tonight. Uh, first question, I guess we all want to know, have we been shortchanged? I cannot say yes at this stage. Uh, on, so I think that the most critical question is that we all to emphasize that it can found our unit activists or they have they they, been able to establish through their appraisal that the all oil in that they can fail. So if, if it's a new discovery, then yes, uh, there is reason to recall, uh, uh, to suggest that let's look at the agreement again, because basically when ACAS took over, they were only supposed to come in and develop or appraise and develop an existing fund, okay? So if that's what, if the appraisal is showing that there is more oil than initially thought, then that's a different ball game. But if the discovery that was announced in February, there are two new discoveries, then it's, it's, it means that what Imani is saying is, is the truth. And we need to take another agreement because they, they wouldn't have had the license to do exploration to, to be making discoveries because they took over a field that has already been discovered. So it depends on where the, the truth lies. And I think GMPC and the Petroleum Commission should be able to come and explain to us exactly what the situation is. The February announcement was it a new discovery or it's, it was, it's, a, it's a realization that the, the, there's more oil than initially thought by hers. Okay. And, and you make the point because it was also subject for discussion whether or not um the recent oil discoveries uh, by ACA was exactly new or not. But as you point out, it's up to the GMPC to come out and clarify whether or not it is the case. Exactly. That, they, 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 you see, they are, together with the Petroleum Commission, everything we've done by way of negotiations as far as our stake in the oil, oil is concerned is done by them with some lawyers. So that that whatever it is, they should come and explain to us whether the February discovery was a new discovery as in drilling new exploration wells or they, they found out that uh, from, from the existing discovery there, there, there is actually more oil than they probably thought. And what, what that, would, yeah, go on. Yeah, that's, that has to be established. If it's if it's a new discovery, then the question is whether they had the license, the permission to do exploration when they had come in uh, to take over a field that was ready to be developed. Okay. I, I was going to say that one would think that whatever deal that uh, the GMPC or government uh, makes is in the interest of the country. So why wouldn't they have realized this? Why, would it, why should it take Imani to tell us this? Don't you think that's that, why... Yeah. That's why I think they should come and explain it to us because it, it's in our collective interest. And I believe that's, that's why we pay people at the GMPC. That's why we pay people at Petroleum Commission. That's why we pay even the Minister of Energy. Somebody needs to explain to us. If, if what Imani is saying is not true, they should tell us what the, tru the truth is. So that we don't, this is so important that we shouldn't leave it to speculation and we shouldn't turn it into what we normally do in this country, somebody comes in, says something, and nobody responds, and then we allow sleeping dogs to lie. I expect ACAS to be more transparent because they are coming from Norway. And I, I think it should be possible for us to even get independent confirmation on some of the things because the Norwegians are known to be, have a reputation of transparent, to be being very transparent. Um, 
So I don't think it's something that we should just sweep under the carpet. Let's make sure that we demand answers from GMPCs and the Petroleum Commission. And even if they, they are not talking, the ministry should be able to tell us what exactly okay. is going on. And, and while we wait for some more clarity from government, uh, if we're on the other, other side, I mean, ACA, um, how, would this, how would you take this? Is, is it going to come out? either positive or negative for them either ways? Well, I think if if I were to be an ACA executive, I would know that Ghanaians are very much awake. And uh, if, if there's something not done right, I would be worried. But if I know I haven't breached any agreement and I have actually done what is right and I haven't done anything, they shouldn't give them any cause uh, so in any case, it's not the government that is telling them that they breached any act, but it's a think tank that has mm. done some analysis. So I'll be worried if I've done something wrong, but if I know I have the backing of law and the, the position is not as being articulated by money, I don't have any cause to, to be alive. Thus, we all know that the oil industry is an international industry and if anybody doesn't understand anything, there, there are always avenues for redress. So I don't think anybody should be worried. But I would be worried if indeed I seem to be uh, shortchanging Ghanaians. All right. And, and I'm sure that would have a definite uh, view as to where to go from here when GMPC comes out to clarify. Thanks very much for yes, your time. They, they should be compelled to clarify issues. And I, I expect that we should take it the long way don't nobody should stop if it means taking this issue to court i think we should pursue that matter when i say we i'm talking about ghana and i, I believe in money is more fired up to pursue this to its logical conclusion but we should all be interested the money is being talked about a huge money and if there's an oversight let's make sure that we correct it before it's too late if there is no no cause for alarm that's where the the people we pay and who represent us should come clean and explain things to us. Thanks very much for your time uh, tonight. That was uh, energy expert Ishmael Ejekum uh, giving us perspective to Imani uh, Forum today, uh, giving us a sense that we have been a uh, short change in the whole uh, negotiation between um, our government and Aka Energy. We hopefully would get some response from GMPC in the near future and then we'll know where to go from there. Well, meanwhile, the Chinubua and Iran to meet 10 field partners in consultation with the uh, Ministry of Energy as well as the Ghana National Gas Company have announced the shutdown of the F FPSO Professor John Evans at a mills operating uh, the 10 field. The routine shutdown, which began on Monday, the 22nd of April, is intended to enable the completion of outstanding work scopes from the project phase. In a release, the main operator, Talo Ghana, said it would carry out essential maintenance works consistent with the facility's design specification to ensure ongoing reliability of the production process. According to the release, the shutdown is projected to last approximately two weeks and has been adequately planned to avoid any interruption of gas supply to the Ghana National Gas Company. And based on that calculation, uh, the shutdown is expected to end on the 2nd of May. You're watching Business Live. I want to take you back now to the banking sector. And commercial banks in the country have been urged to consider taking legal action against loan defaulters. That's uh, coming from the outgoing managing director of the Republic Bank Ghana, Anthony Jordan. He says this will help to reduce the level of non-performing loans on the books of banks. This Mark Awusa spoke to Mr. Jordan at his retirement farewell dinner and has come through with this report. Statistics indicate that asset quality in the banking sector improved following enforcement of the loan right of directive issued in June 2018. Consequently, non-performing loans declined to 6.7 billion CDs in December 2018 from 8.2 billion CDs in December 2017. 
According to outgoing managing director of the Republic Bank Ghana, Anthony Jordan, these figures can improve if banks resolve to apply legal actions against loan defaulters. Customers simply refuse to repay the loan. And so we've had to take actions to get back our money. That's one of the, um, one of the most serious challenges we've had as a bank. And, and how did you get over this at all? How do you suggest this should be uh, addressed going forward? Well, we, we first of all try to understand what they're going through, try to restructure their debt, try to work with them. Um, but in the long run, if we realize that there's this honesty involved, we resort to legal action and re realization of this, our security. In a keynote address at a send-off party for the outgoing managing director of the Republic Bank, Governor of the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Ernest Addison, praised Republic Bank for being among the early banks that met the current minimum capital requirement. For me, it was no surprise when Republic Bank was one of the first banks that met the 400 million minimum capital required. We were very supportive of the policy. They understood what we were trying to achieve. And I'm still looking forward to the vision. On his part, Minister of Works and Housing, Samuel Atachian, reiterated his commitment to seeking a portion of pension funds from SNIT to provide mortgage arrangements to pensioners. Yeah, we want people to retire and they give them uh, coins at the end of the uh, month as a pension stipend and they live in a family house which was built by one successful cocoa farmer long dead. Or the workers of Ghana were ready to say, let's affect the pension fund and let's leverage on it and finance housing and create a mortgage arrangement. Farid Anta is to take over from Anthony Jordan as new managing director of Republic Bank Ghana. Bismarck Eusess reports for Joy Business. Some dance moves from Anthony Jordan there. Well, let's move on. The Ghana Chamber of Commerce and Industry has paid a working visit to Unilever Ghana as part of moves to foster business relations between the Chamber and the manufacturing community. President of the Chamber, Dr. Nana P.I.J. Dankwasu the first, tells Joy Business the Chamber will in the coming weeks be engaging manufacturing firms on some new reforms needed to show up productivity. Charles Aite was part of the visit and reports. Store was part of moves by the Ghana Chamber of Commerce and Industry to familiarize itself with the process of manufacturing in Ghana. Joy Business got in touch with the supply chain director of Unilever, who explained the reduction in benchmark import values to 50% will promote healthy competition on the market. We are very confident, we as Unilever, that regardless of people importing more in Ghana or not, we know our strength, we know that we can be more competitive, we are working for that, and we're going to use Ghanaian as our key levers which we use to make sure that we continue to be competitive regardless of import. And that's what I am encourage all the companies based out of Ghana to do exactly the same, to fight more and then improve their productivity and improve their effectiveness, make sure that you know, import will stop by itself if you are very good in competitiveness. President of the Chamber, Dr. Nana P.A.J. Danka Wosu I, explained what this means to the Chamber. And the motive is to create more employment and also to improve on exports and reduce um, imports. Factory manager of Unilever, Benjamin Brown, explained Unilever's preparation to mentor local manufacturing firms to become global players. If you, if you look at where Unilever has come from when it comes to manufacturing, we've recently just opened our new oral plant, which was opened by His Excellency, the President of Ghana. We also commissioned our new uh, personal care dryer as well, as well as the biomass plant. So I'll say when it comes to manufacturing, we are doing well. The visit to Unilever was also followed by a similar one to B5 Plus company, where the president of the chamber explored investment opportunities with managers of the leading steel industry. In other news, Director General of SNE, Dr. John Operating Kwan, has assured bottlenecks that delay processing and payments of pensions to qualified persons will soon be cleared 
According to him, the trust has set in motion some measures to address these delays. He has also been addressing issues to do with early retirees and the challenges they face with respect to accessing their pensions. Dr. Tenkwan says these issues have been referred to the regulator, the National Pension Regulatory Authority for Redress. He was speaking at an organized Labour 2019 May Day Forum ahead of the celebrations early next month. There is growing concern about the future of workers in the country as economic conditions continue to bite and push business owners out of business. At a forum which brought together many labor unions to discuss worker pensions here in Accra, project assistants at Frederick Ebert Stifton, Dr. Daniel Mann, advocated better working conditions and decent wages for worker groups. They are fighting for decent work for fair wages and for international solidarity. And I would say in this our time, where we are more connected than ever, it is also for us, the workers, to stay connected and to remember on that day, as we are preparing to go for the streets next week, that we are not alone and that together we are strong. We, the working people of the world, are the ones who are actually producing growth and producing wealth, and we should get the fair share, not only of the profits, but also of the decisions. Director General of the Social Security and National Insurance Trust, SNIT, Dr. John Oforitin Krang, said his outfit has set in motion measures to address bottlenecks in assessing and processing workers' pension funds. The reforms that I try to speak to, um, there's many things. First of all, I think people don't realize that everything that we do is governed by the pensions that we pay. They are marked our legislated and governed by uh, there are issues as to people who have to retire at the age of 60. There are serious questions as to whether the current rates of contribution is enough uh, to you know, sustain the scheme long into the future. So these are conversations that we need to start to have to make sure that um, the scheme that we're running uh, is there to, do, to serve the purpose for which it was intended and that is sustainable for generations to come. On ways of broadening the scope of a pension scheme, organized labor believes an amendment to the law to compel all employers to make pension contributions for their employees is the way to go. Dr. Yao ba is General Secretary of a Trades Union Congress. All right, and as we conclude tonight, the Emmanuel Forum is subject for our poll. Uh, we've been asking if you think that uh, we have been shortchanged when it comes to agreements with international oil firms. We just want you to take a look at what we are um, hearing from you now. So the question, do you think Ghana has been shortchanged in its oil agreements with international firms? And that is the result you're seeing tonight. 70% of you saying, yes, you think so, and 30% of you uh, saying no, you don't think that uh, we are being shortchanged at all. The poll is still ongoing. We are just uh, an hour into it, so you can also go there and express your views. Uh, but right now, as with this, the uh, majority of you think that we are being shortchanged. And of course, we are awaiting government's uh, feedback on what Imani has to say about the contract with Aka Energy. That ends business live, but there's more news on our website. Uh, myjournaline.com forward slash business. We've got the day's latest stories there for you to read. And so you can log on and get the latest. Uh, you saw that story about PDS announcing more power cuts. That's it for our program tonight. Thanks for watching. My name is Daryl Kyle. Business Live returns same time tomorrow.